Well, hello again, everybody. I know it's been a while since you've seen my face on camera, and uh, there's been a reason for that. I basically had to hide it, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I've had a very difficult time until a few days ago in Germany, and then it's all over, and I'm I'm okay again. It's a it's a story that talks about the world of magic. And it's a tale that talks about what it is like to step into the world of magic. Especially if you are a high profile person like me, who gets a lot of attention and has brought many, many people who never had an interest in magic or paganism or sorcery. And suddenly they're into it. And that makes you a target. That makes you dangerous. Now, a lot of it is not malicious targeting or malicious dangerous. Within the world of sorcery and magic, it's very, very similar to UFC or to WWF. You build the reputation for yourself through danger, by putting yourself in danger. And by being tested by other magicians. Now, it's a bit of a long story, but bear with me because the intro to where I'm going to go with this next is important. Around late November, I was feeling really well. I was feeling good. Sorcery was getting great reviews. It was selling quite well. People were saying things to me like, your book Sorcery, The Invocation of Strangers, will go on to be considered one of the greatest introductions to magic ever written, and this kind of thing. So I was pretty happy. I was doing a lot of interviews. Then I got this strange text message from a guy who identified himself by the name Largesse. I, that's the name he used. What I discovered was he's an Irish Army officer, intelligence officer, Irish Defence Forces intelligence officer, retired, who runs a magical circle down in West Cork. Now West Cork in Ireland is very similar to Sedona in America or Glastonbury in England. It is a hotbed of New Age, Wicca, that kind of thing, druids and magic circles. This guy describes himself as a warlock, and he's the real deal. The fact that he has the military intelligence services and the defense forces, make of that what you will, and conspiracy theorists, but that also kind of validates a, sec a chapter in my book, Sorcery. So, it was a kind of a coy, smug, passive-aggressive message, um, and then I never heard from him. On the new, beginning of the new moon in December, around the 5th, I think it was, I woke up in the, in the middle of the night and I wasn't feeling right in myself. It felt like I was getting a virus. I had a sense of anxiety. I've never suffered depression in my life, other than I've been down over something, and I've never really suffered anxiety. Uh, I don't even get stage fright when I talk to a big audience or go live on TV. And when I played, I never got stage fright when I played in bands or anything. And uh, when I did stand-up comedy, that just doesn't happen to me. But this was something, a new feeling inside myself. And I just didn't feel right. I didn't feel like me. Uh, it was a sensation in my nervous system that's hard to describe. It was almost like an internal tingling that you felt in your mind rather than in your physiology. Don't mind the cats are playing with a ball here. And that's another thing I'll talk about. They have improved in their mood since I broke this hex. Uh, they were very quiet and morose before that. Now they're playing like kittens again. Now, my familiars, of course. Now, as December progressed, I became increasingly ill. When I say ill, I mean like it was what I went to the doctor and he says to me, you're suffering from nervous exhaustion because you probably work too much. And I do work a lot. I work a hell of a lot. And Christmas was a busy time for me, my day job, which I, which was, I decided to work or leading up to Christmas, double shifts to do to get as much cash as I could because I wanted to go traveling in the first part of 2019 to do filming. Well, by the time it came close to the 20th, I was not in a very good place psychologically and emotionally. 
this, I was under the impression that I was suffering from a phenomenal psychic attack, uh, which I was. I had been hexed. And it, the hex had begun of the new moon in December. So anyway, I had to hide myself. Basically, I took down all my photographs on online uh, and I, I made three videos right before Christmas or just I think it was just around Christmas and I didn't put my face in them on the open source of cold TV channel uh, because by the solstice my blood felt like it was boiling inside my body that's the way I would describe it and uh, I you when you're in this position you don't fight back because you can't fight back now my energy was depleted and I was not in a good place Although cognitively I was extremely aware, I mean I was not like, uh, I didn't have brain fog or bad thinking or, you know, confusion. I was very, that's, that's actually what makes it worse, is that you're cognitively highly aware, but you're emotionally and psychologically being torn asunder on the inside. So you, you're not like dulled to the horror of it. You're not like... Uh, you, you're, you're very much aware of your plight in the most visceral and tense and unfortunate manner. This is the world I've entered. This is the game I play. In mid-December, for some reason, before it got too bad, I decided to book a trip to Germany to do some filming around Wielersburg and the uh, Eckstein and Mount Brocken, the, the Mountain of the Witches. So right after the new year, I was literally on a plane and uh, I was wandering around Germany in a haze. Like, I spent a couple of days in Dublin and then I didn't, I uploaded photos to the internet to show people I was still alive. I was wearing sunglasses or either hiding one of my eyes uh, just to try and to deflect this thing. And uh, I had to get out of Ireland because that, that Ireland was the, the epicenter of the horror that was being inflicted upon me. It was in Ireland, so it was it was this guy, and uh, so I went to Germany, and I was wandering around Germany like a zombie. It was the classic dark night of the soul. I didn't eat anything. I've lost a tremendous amount of weight. Not a bad thing, which I was. I wanted. I was losing weight anyway before that, but it's really come off me now. I'm just like wearing clothes that. I haven't worn in years, this kind of thing. And, uh, which, you know, you're saving money, I guess. <laughs> Not buying new clothes, but, uh, uh, but I felt, I felt like I was being led somewhere. So I had this thing in my head that I was going to go to the Brocken in the Hearts Mountains and perform a, a ritual that I had made up to try and dispel this. So I bought a bag of sea salt, kosher sea salt, and I bought a, and I bought some candles, and basically I was going to try and shock it out of my system by lying naked in the snow on the Brocken at night, in minus six degrees for a few minutes, like a kind of a shock. This is how, you, this is a good way. A uh, freezing cold shower, jumping into the sea in winter, is often a very very good way to remove these attacks. Uh, my dreams were bizarre, just bizarre. I couldn't even, I had dreams that I was bound up in barbed wire and this kind of thing. So I, and I'd shut off all contact with the world and no one heard from me, my family didn't hear from me, no my friends didn't hear from me, I just would post an odd picture to Instagram or something like that. And uh, pretend I was normal but I, and I was together but I was far from it. So something happened uh, the, the goddess of fate and fortuna stepped in and uh, I was in Hanover and I took a train to Wielersburg Castle just to do some research for the upcoming second edition of a Valpurgis Night Volume 2 and also to get some film footage for a documentary. Document, the documentary will be made later. This is not the documentary. This, I'm just going to use some of the footage here. So here's a shot of Wielersburg, Wielersburg, uh, Wielersburg Castle and 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 I went there expecting nothing to happen, just to do a sort of a historical thing. It's a very interesting place. I didn't expect any kind of spooky energy. 
uh, wasn't really there. There's, it's got a very antiseptic museum that's well worth visiting dealing with the occult of the Third Reich. Uh, the SS in particular and I found that fascinating and I got some great research stuff done there spent all at the very end I spoke to the woman in the in the thing and I said I want to see the North Tower and the South Tower the famous crypt at the top that has the the black suns they call it the black suns it's not that the documentary I'm coming out will blow all that nonsense out of water and below it the infamous crypt where you have the 12 steps around it uh, you're not allowed to film. But she said you can film all around the castle, but you can't film those two places. Which I thought was kind of weird. Uh, so, while I was outside, uh, I thought the place would be full of tourists. There was no one around. So I was down in the moat, filming, and I set the camera up on the tripod. And I was filming a, a, a sort of a shot of the bridge across the moat to the main entrance of the castle. And the bridge under it. And then I walked into the section where the North Tower, the, the meeting room with the Black Sun at the top and the crypt at the bottom, and no one was in there. So just by osmosis, noetics, whatever, I decided to perform the, my, my own take on the rites of Lucifer inside the crypt. Because when I walked into the crypt, it was... The energy was astounding. It was not SS energy or, or Heinrich Himmler or Nazi occult energy. Those, uh, those, they were just a bunch of rent boys from the from the, the letter bar scenes in Munich and Bavir in uh, Munich, Berlin, and Hamburg. And they had no real magic. They were more like a Freemasonic type thing. And I will, when the film comes out, I will the documentary that I'm making called the Haxan Protocol will describe all this with the all complex footage and all the other things. I was particularly interested in the Immersol tree, and that's the main reason I went to Germany, which is the sort of like the complication of the the Yggdrasil tree in the Saxon tradition. So what I did was, you'll see me here walking back under the bridge, and I'm going back to the gate that leads into the moat. It's the only one way in that's locked, that's available in winter. And I got a, a worker's, there was a, a landscaper's wheelbarrow and, and a shovel. I closed the gate and put the, I put the wheelbarrow up against the gate and I jammed the gate shut with the shovel. So no one could get in for about 10 minutes. Then you see me here walking back and that's the camera on the tripod. I'm, I'm trying to find, I'm, I was trying to get this atmospheric shot of the two ravens that were flying around the castle. That's why I left the camera there, I was sitting on the tripod running. And I went back to the North Tower crypt. Now, I had a small GoPro session camera, which I held beside my coat. And in my right hand, I, had wa I walked around the chamber, and the acoustics and the energy was like nothing I felt in my life. So, uh, walking around the chamber, brandishing the sigil of Lucifer. Now, before you lose your minds and go Lucifer or Satan and all this stuff, Lucifer doesn't actually exist. Lucifer is an energy force representing the purity of, shall we say, existence. It, it's, it's rooted in the Indo-European word Luke, which gives you the god Lu, the god of the sun, and Loki. So lightning, flash, and the, the, or, the etymology of the term means a flash of brilliance. Okay, And that's what happened to me that day. Now the reason I went into the South Crypt was to tap into the energy. Somebody is using, somebody is using that area for rituals to this day. They're not SS Nazi rituals, they are powerful occult rituals. Well I was not going to let that charge go to waste. So you can see on the camera here, me, I began the ritual by standing on the, on the east side and tapping my foot three times on the ground to open the gates. I then proceeded to walk around the temple, finishing in a spiral in the center. And it's a temple, not a crypt. Um, and whispering, you can't hear it on the camera, but whispering the, the prayer for Lucifer. Now, the invocation of Lucifer, because Lucifer is a god, and not a demon or an, a or an angel, he's an actual god, or it's a god, it's a god force. You invoke God's true humility. You don't go, it's not like a hammer film where you, you see them going, I command you to come forth. You, that's, how, that's what you do to a demon, but you treat them like shit. But to a God, remember, we're subordinate to them. 
so you you go with humility you go with you go with a sense of subordination that you're in the presence of something and you whisper their incantation because you're you're asking them kindly so that's why you can't hear that part on the the camera the little camera on the session then when that was when that was going on the the atmosphere in the place changed remarkably the i knew it was it, the game was on here there was a, a tremendous sensation at the area of my body like a fire where my the tailbone and just above my rectum in that area there and right then i knew what was really happening these people had put uh, this guy and his little group had put an entity in my lower spine and above my rectum and it was f it was running out in the press it was running out because it was in the presence of lucifer now that was good enough and second to that the dew point in the building changed and the walls began to hum and it began like it was going to rain now I was on the point of death at this point and if I was ever going to be found dead I wanted to be found dead like this uh, I want my reputation and I told you it's like WWF or it's like you know UFC you want to you want to you have to build your charisma through these incredible deeds of bravery or daring or stupidity but that's how it works and so I felt the thing shooting up my spine and leading through the back of my head. There was an instant sense of relief. There was an instant sense of feeling better. I went back outside, packed up my cameras, went to the front, took the uh, took the the wheelbarrow and the shovel off the gate, opened everything up, cleaned everything up, uh, tidied everything up, and left as I found it, and then went back to went back to the the cafe and I just had a cup of coffee there before I left I felt 75% better I didn't feel 100% better and it upset me uh, very much went back to my hotel room in Hanover had a shower thought about the experience it was successful but not a triumph uh, I still was very glad I did it I'm lying in there in bed and I begin to immediately start spasming. Uh, the spasms were not like twitches in your... I'm talking about my body was lifting up off the bed. My arms were shooting like this. My sides were going out like this. What that was, was someone... That was someone energetic darts leaving my body that had caused the condition that I was in. These individuals somehow got a sample of my hair down in cork or they got a sample of my sperm my blood or my saliva these are not hard things to get you can drink a glass in a restaurant and they can get you get your saliva from a glass of water you can kiss someone you can fuck someone you can bleed you this, this your hair falls out by itself it's in wash basins and places so there was obviously someone down there in cork working with them who got close to me that's okay this is where we are I'm not, this is not an invented then vendetta, this is not a revenge story. This was me just, just getting rid of it. After this series of sp uh, just spasms ceased, I opened my eyes and the hotel room was filled with a light like you see in those UFO abduction uh, films. It was a, the most beautiful light I've ever seen. Uh, for a second or two, I thought I was dead, and seeing the you know, I saw a beautiful light. It was like a stadium's floodlighting blasted in a hotel room at the same time, but not harsh. It was like a mother's embrace. It was like being washed through your body, and it only lasted for about a second. It was like a pulse, and then it closed. And that was the, the power force of Lucifer. Instantaneously, I felt like a 19-year-old again. And I've been feeling that way ever since. It was, a, it, was, it was the most incredible magical experience of my life. And I'm glad it happened, both the good and the bad, because I'm out the other side now. And I bear no malice or ill will towards 
my adversaries down in Cork. I respect your magical prowess. And I know you now respect mine because you sent me a text, said, text saying, well done. And so it's, that was the game we play. That's the world we live in. And that's if you want to step above the, the bar in the world of magic. These are the kind of things that will happen to you. And these are the kind of solutions you will find. That's why so many occultists, they vanish for a long time. So they, they say they're off doing a ritual. They're actually trying to save their lives. So I'm back, I'm alive, I'm healthy, I feel fantastic. Um, uh, I, I hope you understand why I was out of the way for a while. Uh, it, was, it, was not a, it was a nervous breakdown, but it happened because of this, these people down in Cork. And uh, I hope you watch this video, learn from it. And I, you know, I'm, I'll be back to my full, what's the word, uh, proficient, uh, self pumping out videos and films soon i'm working on a very good and uh, a film project that's going to be filmed all, all around the world actually that's uh basically my tribute to kenneth anger's lucifer rising brought up to date which me and a bunch of people are making uh and you will see that later on in the year for free and uh that's all there really is to say i'm still alive i'm still here and uh Instead of saying feck them if they can't take a joke, I'll just leave it with, uh, you know, Ave Lucifer and long live the horned gods. Thank you.